by um, calling this meeting to order. We're down three today, so we're going to have a little bit of an abbreviated meeting. And we're eight minutes behind, so we're going to do quick catch up. Um, no one's here to make public comment. Let's um, quickly review and approve the minutes from the last meeting. I've already read them. And they look good to me. Motion to approve. I second. So the minutes are approved as they stand, uh, since there are no amendments. And then we'll go on to reviewing our to-do lists. The latest tasks are, of course, on your agenda, I mean your minutes. But if you want to navigate to the site, feel free. I'm realizing there's a couple things I did not do. Okay, can we move on to our next item? Does anyone else want to review your to-do list anymore? This is a high energy meeting, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, chair report. Well, we made the paper several <coughs> times this week and that's really um, exciting news, actually in, in the two weeks that we were away. Today's paper, that was an excellent article, I can't tell you how thrilled I was uh, that this issue of volcano mulching finally made it into the news and I would love to discuss how we can turn that into um, a way to reach out to landscapers and share that messaging. Um, also met my daughter Magsy, although this is um, uh, in both in both articles, this was not an article. This was actually just a caption underneath the photograph. She she got a full feature article in Mass Live, which was great. Yeah, did did you all did I share the Mass Live article with you? Okay, yeah, yeah. And that got shared with a lot of people. I mean, there were many shares online for that, so that was great. What what kind of bothered me about that is that they missed the whole point, which is that they were blight resistant <laughs> chestnut trees. Um, so I almost <clears throat> think there might be an opportunity to write a little clarification to the Gazette uh, by Magsy saying, hey, this, this project was special because it was the, um, it, it involved some rare light resistant chestnut seeds. And I, I, I have one comment about that, and that is that I, I was involved a little bit with the chestnut people. They think of them as worth a huge, very, 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 very valuable. And I don't know. I just wonder if people might take them. Yeah. Uh, just something to think about. I don't have a pretending or opinion about what to do. I don't know if the public knows that. Well, I know, but if you write an article about how oh. rare and special this is and how we finally got the light resistant one, yeah. I'm just wondering whether it's something to, to, uh -huh. to emphasize. Because I know when uh, I was involved up in Smith and I did a little work there, and my daughter actually was involved in spreading them around the forest. Yeah. When they spread them in the forest, they didn't tell anyone where they were. They were afraid people might take them because they are, I mean, they are worth a lot. I mean, I people mean, would do a lot. To get I know them. Steve had to make a very sizable contribution to the American Chestnut Foundation in order to get this. Exactly. These are taken very seriously. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Worth, they're, worth, they're worth hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Over that piece. Yeah, exactly. Over $200 a piece? Yeah. 
Oh my God, that makes me feel even worse about the first year we did this. Remember, I'm the one that put them out and the squirrels ate them all. Yeah, that well, means they ate like a thousand dollars worth of stuff. Practice yeah. self-forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's part of the process though. Like at Smith, they put them out on purpose and, and let them get eaten because they were, in the experiment, they were trying to see what would happen if you put them out. Oh. In other words, yeah. if you tried to reforest just by putting tests on that. Uh -huh. They found out that they got no test in this. Yeah. And so now they're, it's part of the science. Yeah. I'm figuring it out. All right. Well, um, and, and with that article, I would have loved the issue of volcano mulching to be, it's kind of like this classic journalistic flaw, which is burying the lead. And I feel like they buried <coughs> the part about volcano mulching into the fourth paragraph or something. Yeah. So. Um, I have to say, I went around it. Ten times trying to make that the. I completely you, believe you. Yeah, I kept saying, "Well, we're really just concerned about not having this happen anymore and getting this off the trees." And we really think that it's a common practice; that everyone does it, so there's no blame. But we need to all learn. Blame. That's the good part. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's just there's just like something that happens. We have to have stop it from happening. Yeah. And then I could tell from the questioning that it was going sideways, but there was no yeah. doing anything. Right. That. Yes. I mean, so that's part of free, free press. It's part of free press, but it's also a reminder to us that when we deal with journalists, to keep, to at the very end maybe even saying, here's here's what I think is the correct, and of course they, they do whatever they want with it, but I, I almost feel like I, I you know, <coughs> somehow uh, we failed um, in not making the blight resistant part, the, you know, the feature to, to this messaging. So anyway, lessons learned. The Gazette has a lot of college students who write their articles. I don't know what you, what you guys had, but. Sarah. Sarah, was she young? I mean, they have very little full-time news report staff. Yeah, now. Sarah Robertson. They're She's often journalists. She's probably 30. She's probably 30. Okay. Yes, it's the same writers they used to have. No. I actually, I'm, I'm very pleased overall with that article. I mean, there was a little bit of investigative journalism. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. I take that back. Or yoga. <laughs> or what happens in yoga. Oh, yeah. Well, that wasn't in the meeting, though. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, back to what you report. Um, just to say that I'm thrilled at how much great PR we're getting, and it, we'll just keep putting it in our archive. <coughs> what a great program we've got. Um, anything else from chair reports? I can't think of anything, so I'm going to toss it to you. Um, I don't have, uh, well, other than I, did, I worked with Jay to finish the chestnut tree plantings in um, Child's Park after we did the plantings up in uh, the uh, Fitzgerald Lake watershed area. So that was that was kind of fun, Jay. I really felt the entire I'm doing what you did. So <laughs> way back in the day. Way back in the day, before it was fashionable, right? Yeah. <laughs> do it in the daylight. Uh, I saw them there across from the uh, the Y. Yes. The, yeah. the, uh, <coughs> yeah. okay. And uh, the other thing was is that we were supposed to have had a public safety hearing on the 13th, which was Monday, but a one singular two and a half inch tree that was at Roberts Middle Reservoir. It's, it's, it's an elm. And for some reason or other, they gazette, the gazette published it correctly, but then they published another, the original hearing on, what was it, the 11th? The 11th they published it, and it said the hearing's for the second. So it got, we had a, because we were so confused, we decided not to have it. In hindsight, I went up there and talked to the contractor and got a real handle on one of the trees were coming down, and none of those trees in that clump were coming down. So the long and short of it is there is no more public shade tree here. In the tree stage. You're right. So, but it was just a little snafu. But other than that, I mean, I think uh, the things I've reported about are actually farther along than uh, uh, the agenda. Um, I did reach out to uh, the mayor's office actually to sit with the mayor and meet with him about the setback planting language and uh, uh, program. Uh, yeah, the uh, new. Uh, Public, public shade tree guide. Okay. And, uh, few yeah. Other, yeah, and um, also to talk to him about the tree planting in memory of Ned. And the other thing is that I need to be reappointed if he so chooses. Oh. So my, my, the appointment actually runs out every three years. 
reappointed as a tree warden. Yeah. Tree warden. Yeah, that was something that, that was something done when they last time <laughs> It's not in there, but the last time they amended that, they also amended another section about uh, chapter 41.106 where it talks about the tree wards and how the tree wards are, are appointed, um, how they're appointed, and what kind of educational experience they have to have, depending upon the amount of uh, population in each community. So, we're going well put that together. They have to have some kind of certificate from the Food and natural resources, which doesn't really exist anymore, so that's out of date. But so he's got to put me up for appointment or or not. <laughs> so I'm waiting to hear back from him. Uh, that's a bit. Okay. Um, one thing I forgot to report in my chair report was that <laughs> um, the subcommittee on planting plan had a plan to me this past Saturday and did in a staggered fashion <laughs> uh, to, to look at Bridge Street. We did we did make some progress, but we did it, I think, by like passing the baton <laughs> one after the other. Um, and so we want to make sure that we come up with a date to have our next step. I will say about the Bridge Street, I, I personally got as far as um, from Holly Street to where the Bridge Street takes a big bend, you know, where it's Shaw's, Shaw's Motel, that area. And I just found uh, many more spots to plant small underwire trees than Davy Tree Group had identified. So uh, we that could be a very densely, densely um, tree, the area. And the other part that I thought was interesting, and it was maybe like, it was, it was a possibility for one of our first uh, projects where we pull up pavement and plant trees was in front of the post office. In front of the post office, you've got a double, you've got basically a double width of walkway. You've got one full like five by five width of concrete, and then you've got these kind of faux pavers. Yeah, yeah, the concrete, stamp concrete. Yeah. And um, now I don't know if that is considered federal property or if that's city property. city property. So that could be an awesome spot because it's also right near a bus, bus stop. Bus stop. Yeah. So if we if we wanted to try the first three trees, there's no wire interference. It's full. It would be full sun. I mean, it could be jackhammered up. I mean, and then we wouldn't necessarily have to have uh, the fully amended uh, structured soil. We could just because those panels are pretty big. Yeah, so big. if they're big, they're big enough to have trees, and we put trees just next door. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. We could just continue the the continue honey locust. It would be a really nice line. Be really, really and nice. the best thing about it, it was is that it would hide that hideous building. Yeah. So, uh, Rich, from a practical point of view, say we wanted to go forward, are, are there, there are no hurdles to, in terms of regulatory? Right? You just go and tell your crew to. Cut off the sidewalk. Well, that kind of, that case, I would I would want to have a little way in from the city engine. Yeah. You know, I just want to right. make sure that the sidewalk that the other side of it exists is you know ADA. It's point. definitely yeah. I I, right. I definitely it, took because note. I believe there was a tree belt there before. Right. So, but I, I think your your what you said earlier is kind of poignant because it's something that Rob touched on earlier after the day report was done is that you know there is there's a lot of places to plant trees that don't they exist in the tree inventory. I counted. I counted on both sides, uh, up into the bend, possible 40 spots. That was just, that's yeah. a tiny fraction right. of bridge. Th this is why it's important, even though Davies has planted a tree here, yeah, you yeah. have to go out in the field and yeah. have to really figure, you know, in this location, you can actually put two trees, not just one. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think that's important to keep in mind. Yeah, and we, you know, that's what our spread tree did, would do, would be getting down in the weeds and, and yeah. giving precise locations that you can then put back and however you choose. All right, so that's, did you want to say anything about Yeah, your? then Molly and I uh, picked up from that bend down to the bridge and back. Uh, we might have been more conservative, both sides of the street, we got about 75. So J so just setback. And that's, and that's setback. Right. They didn't work on um, the tree belt. Yeah, just setback. What, 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 you they could. We just didn't. You worked on a tree belt? 
uh, we worked um, we, we weren't doing the tree belt. We were doing. Oh, you weren't doing the tree belt. Um, going up onto people's properties. Yeah. And I think that's just because of a miscommunication. Okay, so you, we would definitely go back. You did tree belt. I did Maryland tree did belt and, and Marilyn, did yes, and okay. Molly did set back. So right. we would definitely go back and do tree belt. Right. But of course you get to Grant Avenue and then it gets tricky because that's when the state highway begins. Right. So I'm um, still working on that. J just love to get you back in into the oh, I love to. <laughs> I know. I was there. Please don't, right please don't feel like we're trying to shut you out. When I got your message, I thought, oh, God, she's going to think that we're like, <laughs> Anyway, um, it was just a comedy of errors. Um, okay, so that's back that, back to my tree report done. Finish um, Rich's tree warden report. And now we're going on to the traffic calming manual. All right. <clears throat> so... Uh, you got three documents, the old 2008 traffic calming manual, uh, and then I also printed out a, um, from, it's pretty old, from July of 15, and there was only two online, of, uh, I guess, a report prepared by the DPW after, um, I guess, someone, you know, mentioned that Hatfield Street needed some calming, and then this was the, the report that DPW put together just to show you what that look like. Then the last page uh, is uh, not what I wanted it to be. All right, so never mind. So you only have two documents. Oh, okay. Was it was the one that you meant to be that one spreadsheet they have on tree? On yeah, it was all the. It was kind of all the projects that are currently yeah. in the works. Okay. So, so Anyway, okay. so let's start with the manual. Okay. Uh, so again, this is the 2008 manual. Trees are mentioned as uh, uh, being a, a tool uh, in the toolbox on page three. Trees are mentioned, I underline that. And they're also mentioned again as a traffic calming method on page four. Um, I think really where uh, the role of trees can be added starts on page seven of that old um, traffic calming manual. Uh, number one, I think it should be explicitly stated that the requests, uh, when they're sent to uh, the Transportation Parking Commission, that they're also shared with other applicable bodies, including the planning department, the tree warden, police and fire, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, then down a little bit further, uh, they talk about um, they consider the availability of city funding when making a determination if it's going to go forward, the resources uh, that are available, and they give priority to addressing traffic and safety concerns in the following areas. And they mention streets that provide access to schools, et cetera, uh, streets that are heavily traveled by pedestrians, et cetera, or, or near certain public structures or facilities. Uh, streets that are programmed by DPW for reconstruction in the near future. But I also think they should add uh, something that uh, talks about the planning that has been going on. So streets that have been identified uh, in the bike ped uh, plan or prioritized by the Public Safety Commission for planning. Since we're formalizing our prioritization process a little bit more, maybe that can be now added to this as part of the uh, elevated criteria for when DPW is going to um, move on a request. Okay, so because your your commentary on the side got cut off a little bit, it should. Is, am I the only one that has that problem? It's a little bit. Okay, so it's a number four. So you're you're suggesting we add number four streets that have been identified in the bike head plan or prioritized by the Public Tree Commission for planting. Okay. Okay. <coughs> And again, on uh, page eight, you're kind of working your way through the process now. Now we're, now we're into the traffic coming needs assessment process and what that uh, data and report looks like. Again, the example of the report is the Hadley at Field Street one. Um, they talk about the physical description of the street, um, but they don't talk about the real or apparent width of the street uh, and the visual corridor. Now, that's identified uh, up front as something that's important um, in traffic calming. Hello. 
but it's not mentioned. Uh, it's not mentioned as something that goes into the report. So I think there needs to be some sort of assessment of the real and apparent width of the street and the visual corridor of the driveway. What what is meant by visual corridor? Uh, basically, just how what the cone of visibility is, so that you know the tighter the cone, the slower you go, the bigger the cone. Okay. And are there, are there, is that corridor categorized certain ways, like numerically or I'd have, to, I'd have to look into that, how they would, uh, I'm sure there's a measurement that you need, some sort of angle that you think. I see, okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, nowhere do they do uh, uh, an inventory of trees uh, on the street, so I think that uh, there should be an inventory of the trees. And by that, you, do you mean like public shade trees, the ones that are right along the edge, or do you mean everything? Uh, you could, you know, state the ones within 20 feet, mm -hmm. or, or, don't, or differentiate, you know, true public shade trees and then those within 20 feet. Okay. Sometimes those do <coughs> impact the visual corridor. Mm -hmm. um, and they also mentioned earlier on how the curvature of the street is uh, something that is important in traffic counting, but they don't mention that here in the report. So I, I'm just, I was just trying to make it consistent form. It has nothing to do with trees. Can't resist your planning. Is it? <laughs> um, and then on page 10, again, this is kind of the uh, prioritization criteria. Oh. Um, you know, and we could add, you could add some, you could add more specific tree language here. I, I did think they should put in the real or apparent width of the street and visual corridor as prioritization criteria. Um, and we could talk about if we think anything more specific around trees uh, should be in this project prioritization criteria. <coughs> well, so what I think if I understand you, the visual corridor would, would would kind of is a kind of a proxy for the presence of street trees along the edge, right? With that, that uh, would or other, th I mean, or uh, other things. Yeah, it's very rare people want to traffic calm in dense urban environment that's you know that's tight oh, buildings. Yeah, yeah right. buildings, right, right, yeah. right. But um, yeah, so it could be buildings, uh, you know, taller street furniture, type of lighting, uh, and for mostly trees. So uh, one question, I, I remember reading this myself separately and I remember thinking this would be a great place to put the presence of street trees. Um, but if you think that that is redundant in that, in that it's kind of implied or it's captured when you talk about visual corridor or whether you think having a separate row for presence of public shade trees would, would be helpful then would they go there? Um, well, presence of, uh, what do you, so you get points. Is it more points get you higher prioritization for traffic calming? Uh, points yes. are bad? Points are bad. Oh, okay. Or so points are good in that you get traffic calming. So how do, you, how do you say that with? Uh, I'd have to play with that a little bit. Yeah, more. okay. I mean, because some of this is frankly ridiculous. Pace car participation. I mean, give me a break. That was like a five-minute fad that went nowhere, right? Pace car participation. What is that? It's been around for. A while. I tried to keep it just to the tree stuff. Really. <laughs> yeah. No, but can't we just like excise that and pop a tree in, right? <laughs> and say, uh, well, what it, does someone want to describe pace car participation? I don't even know what it is, frankly. For a while, there was this program where um, you, you, I guess, could go through some kind of training and get a bumper sticker on your car that called itself oh, a pace man. car. The mayor, remember yeah. Mayor Higgins had yeah. one, yeah. which is so funny because I used to see her right, she a fast driver. <laughs> you weren't supposed to there, go over the speed You were supposed to. If you saw the and so sticker. if you saw, I guess it was someone who was sort of self-regulating the, the speed of the traffic. Huh. Um, you know, and it was modeling good behavior and so forth. And, um, and she needs to speed around. <laughs> she's, got, she's got a lead foot. Um, she's, you know, it's her impatient personality. I can't, I can't, I know a little bit about this. 
Um, anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. I just think that this might be a good place to try to insert trees somehow. But we can think about that. Yep, and the other thing that I kept thinking about, you know, with this is that inherent, at least the way the current policy is, conflict with sidewalks and trees. Um, you mean the policy of having sidewalks on both sides? Is it? Uh, yeah, the policy of sidewalks first and then worry about everything else yeah. later. Yeah. It is. <coughs> it's also completely unrealistic, I think. I mean, they're not actually going to build the sidewalks on every little side street. Well, and to some extent, bike lanes also serve as a potential uh, competitor to this space because. I mean, uh, from what I understand from our meeting with Joel Russell, that um, the presence of uh, bike lanes don't protect a person biking a a any more, in fact, than, than in the presence of, than a narrower street that has the presence of trees on either side. In fact, it gives, uh, it gives some a false sense of security that they're in this protected space when they're really not. And it, it when it comes to planning, it forces us to create wider avenues to accommodate both cars and, and bikes when actually what we want to do is shrink the avenue. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I can get a disagreement about yeah. that one. Yeah. No, I, I, I frankly think bike lanes are a massive mistake and uh, unprotected bike lanes. So you just put a stripe and you throw five feet of pavement that cars use to go around a left turning vehicle, you know, or, you know, a door opens and yeah. And as a cyclist, I'd much rather ride on a narrow, tight street. Right. Because I, I know everyone's going, you know, 30 miles or less yep. on Prospect Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was one other place um, where I thought, so do they, does this manual describe, um, or maybe maybe we already did, it already did that in earlier pages, um, traffic calming solutions and do we feel that trees are explicitly among the solutions? Uh, yeah, on page four it says how traffic is calmed in a very brief manner. Uh, and it's number one is narrowing the real or apparent width of the street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, trees are mentioned in that. Number two is deflecting or adding curvature. And then number three is uh, putting in Bumps and bumps. Okay, Don't good. Push. Okay, so trees is covered. Yeah. Right here. Assessment. Does anybody mind if I close the window? No. That's cool. All right. Well, any um, any initial comments? Where would you like? Where do you think we should go from here? Should we? Um, should I go ahead and send this out to the three up to everybody, including the three others, and give them an opportunity to weigh in on your on your? It, is this are these just scribbled notes, or is this are you actually? Is this the language you're suggesting that we insert? Uh, they're mostly scribbled notes. So what I would do is, based on any feedback today, I I formalize it into a word document and saying insert X, Y, or Z okay. here or here. All right. So let's give feedback, and I think we should just go to the next step because the three others will have a chance to weigh in with, you know, with that next step. So in the discussion, we just came up with the idea that it might be better to have a narrower street, not a second sidewalk, and have trees instead. Is, is it possible to, to, to plant that idea in here, or is that not even that's beyond the scope of what we can deal with? Today? Well, it's certainly a much larger uh, more all-encompassing policy than just uh, you know a couple traffic calming um, plans that get taken up. I don't think it's really resulted in 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 much on the ground change under the traffic calming because usually all they do is put in a bumper hump. Yeah. And if you look yeah, at no, the results of what yeah. they've done, it's all bumps and humps. Right. right. Um, yes. So I think. I think that that particular topic, we can certainly plant the seed that you know we believe that the existing city policy creates conflict, um, and we need a more nuanced approach. And this narrower cone can be created by using that space, right? Using the language of the traffic engineer. Yeah, you can make a, 
Yeah, exactly. So we could do it here. It would help us maybe to at least ourselves think that's what we're, where we're headed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, couple of things. One is that, yeah, it seems like right in front of us is just this narrow manual that we're asked to provide input for. And that, it seems like you're on the right track. I, I don't see any additional places that you haven't already ca ca captured. So I'm in favor of you going ahead and drafting something. I'm also in favor of when the time comes for us to submit it to the um, traffic and, no, Transportation and Parking Commission for their, for their, in, to, the, to receive our input. I would love to have you on their agenda, Todd, and to present this and the bigger issue that you perceive so that they can hear it from someone who is schooled in this subject. And, and you know, n narrowly with regard to trees, but more broadly as a panel. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, it, you know, it's interesting if you look at the criterion for the word sidewalk is not mentioned in how traffic economy is achieved. It's not, sidewalks aren't a tool. And neither bike lanes are a tool on how you comp traffic. But yet, but it, yet it's a, a criteria, or yet it's a it's a the way of measurement, you know, as, as to where a project huh. falls. Interesting. Um, yeah, they do have bike. Interesting. Yes, I mentioned. Oh, that. I remember what it was. Is is the the sort of recommendation that that you were getting at, and that Rob was echoing. Is that in co direct conflict with the complete streets that we've adopted, the Mass DOT complete streets? No, not necessarily. It was some, where did we hear about this, Rich? It was some quasi-formal, informal policy of the city that if a street doesn't have sidewalks, it's gonna. Mm -hmm. And that the sidewalks come first, almost regardless of other things. Really to, to make Northampton a sustainable, walkable, and that's where that and that started probably before do you think that that's in the sustainable Northampton plan I think so maybe I we should look there I think that's probably where it is because that's uh, I don't know every every street that they gave so far see the other thing too is that I'm just I'm trying to think of the back line it's been so long since we did like complete bathing project yeah. we're just starting to go down this road and I know that the uh, this is important to put this together now, I think, because they are, the mayor is proposing potentially to, to put together a very large capital paving program uh, for the next fiscal year, which would you know, basically change uh, you know, to, uh, to the tune of maybe uh, seven million dollars. So if you're doing complete paving, uh, you know, it's really from sidewalk to sidewalk. Yeah. The other thing too is that oh, it is. It includes the sidewalk. Well, the, the reason I'm saying that is because there also has been an inventory done similar to the tree inventory for all the city sidewalks. Yeah. So they're going to target certain sidewalks to be reconstructed. So yeah. that would be the time when we would want to jump on, or before that, we'd want to be on the bandwagon, all on the same page about you know using flexi pave and other types to protect trees that exist, and also potentially maybe expanding tree belt areas so we can plant more trees. But that is kind of separate from this, but it's kind of all, it's all tied together. Very much, because. Yeah, because if they eliminate the places to plant the trees, then we're, we can't, yeah, right. We're gonna find um, ourselves I mean, I, I don't on think, Pleasant Street, right. the same situation. You're, you're not gonna see, I don't think you're gonna see like neighborhoods that have pre-existing two sidewalks in the street. I mean, neighborhood streets are gonna be neighborhood streets. I, I don't see that changing. I mean, they won't be removing two, so. No, no, but it's it, it will continue to be the same. But I think it, every street's going to be looked at, and if the inventory shows the sidewalk has to be replaced, it might become part of the paving project, which it has in the past. But because we haven't done a lot of paving, you know, for ten years we really did very little paving. It's just patches. Here I'm wondering there. if you can add in your conversation with the mayor just the the, um, the hope, the wish that w and when these things come up that you're you're brought to the table at the earliest possible yeah i'm usually included in the paving aspect of things through our engineering department yeah um, but 
kind of have to wait until the mayor's, you know, until the Calvin Booth's Committee says, yes, we're going to approve X, Y, and Z dollars for paving. And then the DPW city engineer will come up with an actual street list of uh, uh, based on pavement, uh, pavement condition indices and frequency of travel and so on, and condition of world, okay. con conditions in the field. So are we mostly talking about the main arteries? That's what I believe, like, for example, Burt's Bear Road is going to get paved yeah. next year. You know, So Burt's Bear Road is, I don't believe, going to have any sidewalks added to it. Yeah. Um, but you never know. I don't know. Maybe one side. But I, I don't. That project's going to be very expensive. So so I don't know the answer to all those things. But I know that going forward, there will be a, a sidewalk replacement program. And I think that. If the roads stay the same width, the, the road work is the road work, but the <coughs> sidewalk replacement program is really going to be important for us to be involved in to make sure that, you know, they're using FlexiPave and other products that will reduce the conflicts that mature trees or potential mature trees are going to have with sidewalks. So, okay. And, uh, yeah, keep your ear to the ground on yeah, that because yeah. I think that, frankly, Todd, you you know, you're you feel I feel like you're the lone voice of reason when it comes to um, shrinking this, the width of, of streets in Northampton, um, and that regardless of your place on the tree commission, I think it's it's a it's a perspective that really needs to be amplified, and so if even like I'm thinking Birch Pit Road, that's a that's a it's wider than it needs to be, it just is. Um, so, yeah. Speak up. Yeah, and then uh, just I'll draw your attention. And, and I mean, think about this and you know read it. And this report, I guess it was done. Uh, it took two years to get through. So this was done in September of this year. Um, you know, the recommendations for Hatfield Street, which I drive on every day. Which is Hatfield Street. Uh, the uh, shortcut from bridge to oh, the co-op. Right. Um, so yeah, the recommendations are a new sidewalk is proposed on the east side of Hatfield Street from North King to Cook Ave. Okay. Crosswalks are proposed at the intersection of Cook Ave and Lowell Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that, that would be a mid-block crosswalk with rectangular rapid flashing beacons. And that's it. So there's no tree belt proposed, no trees proposed? Yeah, nor any, like, I mean, that road, you know, you do, that road needs a chicane or something. It needs to, it's a, it's a little racetrack. Yeah. Um, you can get up to 70 on that. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, just the picture alone tells you why. It's a wide visual corridor, you know, very little um, <coughs> trees where you need them. There's one super tight tree if you're um, at the corner of uh, um, Kim, whatever you said. Anyway, um, but I guess the point was, you know, from a traffic calming point of view, the recommendations don't calm traffic. They enhance the pedestrian's ability to move with a sidewalk and a crosswalk, but they don't calm traffic. There's nothing in this recommendation that slows down a car. And I think, you know, traffic calming, should, the whole point of traffic calming is to slow down a car. Yeah. Can I shut the window? Oh, All right. Can I, I did read this. It's interesting. They, they claim that everybody's going on an average of. Uh, 31 miles an hour in a 30 zone. It seems unlikely to me. I find that hard to believe. Uh, yeah, I do too. You know, I would love to see the bell curve of that 31 because, you know, there are times when there's, there's backed up traffic. And so uh, as you're approaching a stop sign, you're going to be going three miles an hour. That might be. Yeah. And <laughs> an average is just an average. Yeah, or right here. But if you're going south, if you're flying off Route 5, you take that yep. corner, I mean, right about here, you're, you, yeah, they're going, you're going, going like six miles an hour. Yeah. I know. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been on that road going slow. Yeah. It's awkward. Yeah. You know, like going speed limit. Yeah. It's awkward. I go to the car. I can fly. Yeah. Awkward. Yeah. I mean, the roundabout will help a little bit, but um, it won't alleviate, won't alleviate, you know, 
Anyway, we'll come off at a, at a slower speed. We'll come off at a slower speed. Yeah. No. All right. So the next, by the way, Marilyn, did no. you want to weigh in with anything on this? I haven't heard from you. Uh, no, but I just scanned the sustainable Northampton comprehensive plan, and, then, and there's plenty of opportunity for adding wording to that. I know it's um, January 2008 to <coughs> 20 year plan. Anyway, there's not a whole lot of mention of trees. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say is that the, the draft manual that's being rewritten, I think is, so once the commissioners look at the proposed, Todd's proposed recommendations, I think they, instead of going to the parking, instead of going to parking transportation, I think those recommendations should be forwarded to the myself and the director so they actually can be put in the draft manual and then the draft manual will go to transportation and parking mm -hmm. instead of the other way around and then at that point that's when commissioners could come to the parking and transportation and justify their yes. recommendations but I think if it, if it if it passes or goes passes muster through the department and gets to the table because you have uh, police, fire, parking, EPW, I'm not, I can't remember all the other folks that are there, but there's quite an array of people planning is are already all involved, so they're actually looking for this document to sort of be delivered to them and they're going to review it. So if that information is in the document prior to, to so if you just come there and show up with stuff you want to enter into the draft, then it's, it's, it's not going to work. I think it will work better if we okay. got the stuff right. internally to the DPW uh, because the mayor is going to actually will end up approving whatever manual comes up. It will be a policy document. Okay. So can it, is it too tight a, tide uh, a, a timeline next time we meet to vote to approve the recommendations that Todd makes and that we amend if necessary? Can we, can we get that turnaround? Does that feel, this doesn't feel like, you know, it's that, I mean, already I think we're 90% there. Wouldn't you bring that to engineering because they're actually the ones that create that Yeah, what I would do is once they have uh, approved the language they want to be in, in the draft document, I would bring it to Donna and Maggie, who's the traffic engineer, and say this is what the Public Safety Commission wants in this document, and we would like to put it in there, and please put it in there, and we'll see if it passes muster, or, you know, let's get some approval, and you know, that sounds fine, we can put it in there. I think that's, that's my impression of Donna said. You have some draft language you want to put in there, just get submit. it to me, submit it, and then we'll put it as a whole draft, the whole document that will have to pass muster for TPC. I see. And then TPC will send it to the mayor's office, and then it will become okay. an actual right. working document, because there really is no... The whole document doesn't really give anyone any direction as to how to enforce it, who actually pulls the plug and decides what traffic counting is going to be there. It talks about how you get uh, you know, proper traffic counts and how you qualify for a traffic study and everything else, but then it doesn't give someone the actual, okay, I, I'm going to make the decision, you're going to have a speed up here and it's going to be here today. Yeah. So that's why this rewrite of this was happening and I think it's going to become a document that the mayor will say. You know, because he is in charge of the department, that this is where the traffic company is going to be, and this is what we decided to do based on all this investigation. You know, I remember we when we discussed this a long time ago, because there is a pot of money for traffic calming, it was another reason why we wanted to make sure that trees were explicitly um, described in the manual as a solution, mm -hmm. was that it's another, it's another way for us to to forward our uh, the work we're doing already, but in very strategic areas. Um, so, Todd, if there's any way that you can explicitly put in here, um, I mean, I don't know if this is such an outdated document that that all of the changes that we haven't seen provide us more information. But it just doesn't seem like it says here are the solution here are the types of solutions. And, and here's how you evaluate which ones you want for this particular street. 
I don't know how that decision making is done, and maybe that's what you and I are saying the same thing. But regardless, it'd be nice if we if 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 there is such a chapter to an, a future manual that it said that include trees as one of the possible solutions. I think that's what we're, we're look. I want to have that language to be able to put into this document. The present rewrite is basically based upon how traffic calming gets implemented. So after it leaves TPC and they say, okay, if you qualify for three speed humps, who's going to put them in? Who's going to do, who's going to make the decision? Where are they going to be located? It's, it's more based on that as the rewrite. The, the, the process about what you go and apply for tra a traffic calming application and how it's factored is not really changing. It's the actual implementation of it is, that is changing. Yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, that's the main flaw of the document in, in that it doesn't <clears throat> it it doesn't create synergy between the issue and the solution. In other words, if, if it comes up that the street is a is this straight, you know, the solution is to curve the street, or if it's you know a wide visual corridor, it's to tighten it up, or if it's a combination of both. But there's no connection between the issue and the solution. It's just a combo. And then they throw the cheapest, easiest thing in there, which is the, the know, humps and the humps. Yeah, and and that's that. I don't know if I shared with you one email that I got from Ryan O'Donnell, and he's go. He was basically saying, "Gee, I don't know if people on a speeding street are actually going to accept trees as a solution to their that what they perceive as an urgent traffic calming problem, speeding problem." I mean, alone, that alone. Or, well, it's, it's he just he didn't necessarily say alone. Yeah. I would never suggest that they be the only solution, but no, they'd be part of the solution. I know. For example, I not not this tree, not on this tree is not tree lined. Yeah. The, the right hand side going towards Florence has a tree belt, with the un underwire trees, but it's like South Street we just planted, but it has no trees. Yeah. So along with the speed homes we built, if you had, you know, a mature tree set there. It's going to really, it's really going to reduce people's visual effect of the cars going by when they're speeding. It's also going to create that vision, that tunnel, that yeah. tunnel vision because you can plant on both sides of the street there. So I, I, I think it really just, and I agree with Todd. I, I think there sometimes doesn't seem to be. We've just put in speed humps. We really have not been really crafty um, in actually adopting other possibilities that you could, you could have put in chicanes on. What are chickens? Um, that's where the actual the traffic is actually shifted the roadway, mm -hmm. so it's actually forced to slow down because that's the turn. Okay. So you could, little bump outs. Yes. Is that there? Yes. You okay. could do you could do you could do three of them over there. You yeah. could put you could have put a tree planting. Yeah. Right there where the actual curve comes out. You know, so you could be kind of creative, and I think that's kind of what that document is missing. Um, you know, and I also think that there's been this pot of money that's been kicking around, but it hasn't been. The DPW really only spends that money in relation to building the speed, um, the materials, the forms, the markings, the signage, um, the parts to uh, determine the traffic counter, um, you know, the, the tubes that they lay out, all those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. it hasn't really been utilized, I think, well enough. And I think that's one of the reasons why they want to rewrite this manual as well, because they want to expand and say, okay, what are the communities doing? around the country and it's really throughout the world to make traffic coming really just more than a speed jump or hump or bump, whatever you want to call them. So, so I think get the, have, right. have the commissioners look at the draft language, yeah. come to a decision. And yeah, okay, so I'm going to put that on next agenda is that we're going to actually finalize that language and get it, get it to them. And then Todd, uh, willing, I hope you'd be willing to go in person and provide an opportunity to, you know, have a conversation to justify. Sure. Okay, thanks. Just going back to um, Nantuck and, and other streets, including just, I just want to say we're, we're 10 minutes behind, so including let's wrap this up um, next. A lot of people come up to me and ask for trees as a traffic calming measure to live on those streets. So just in terms of what Council Ryan, Ryan said, yeah. it's not my experience that people at all, it's quite, quite the opposite. People are very anxious. They, there's a little community organization on uh, Nantuck that's 
asking for trees on both sides. That's good information. And yeah. maybe when Todd goes to the meeting, you'll go too. Because I think that sort of feedback is maybe they're, it's not coming to them. Strong Lincoln app, and they got trees. Yeah. It, they've been, you know, these people we live on streets with kids where the traffic goes too fast. That's come down yeah. between them. And they're, they're very, very grateful for the trees they have gotten. Right. When does that committee meet? Third Tuesday of the month. Third Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Third Tuesday of the month, 4-6. <laughs> Where? City Council Chairman. That might be next Tuesday. <coughs> so obviously we're not going to be able to make that one. <coughs> okay. Thank you for doing that work, Todd. Um, all right, well, we kind of already talked about the planting plan subcommittee. We could use we could use this moment to pull out our calendars and get something on, on the um, on the calendar for the next time we meet. Do you want to do that really quickly? Do you have your calendar? Um, with you, I don't have it with me, but I can probably go off my memory. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, you have well, a number? Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, like, it's not lost in your adult on yet? Yeah. Um, Sooner rather than later. Thursdays were generally good days? Yes, but I can't do the 30th. And then next week is the... Is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, I can't do the 30th either. So that puts us into December or December. What about this Sunday at 9.30 a.m.? Yeah. Oh, All right, let's tentatively say Thursday, December 7th. All right. All um, right, and I will check that with Molly. What time of day are you thinking of? I think we always have to do evening. 6.30 does not seem to be realistic for you. No, I, I can. You can? Yeah. Okay. Eight. Seventh. On December second. Uh huh. Seventh. Okay. Great. I'll check with Molly. So that is twelve seven six thirty p.m. I'll email everyone, including Molly. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're almost back on schedule. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a short meeting. Uh, fall planting. Well, I think the uh, trees got planted on uh, South Street last weekend. Yeah, that went really well. I think uh, the 21 or 22, I can't remember, trees. 21. 21 trees did get planted. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, I expect to see more trees in the next two weeks, including, turns out there is some volunteers of idle time over Thanksgiving, so as long as we get them uh, out of DPW before DPW begins to close up Wednesday, that will happen. Mm -hmm. And where are your, well, like, what sites are you? The sites? Yeah. Uh, well, um, Site. Um, actually, is revisiting North Street in Great Park. So there are trees on, for instance, Elizabeth, which is the corner of North, Elizabeth, right on the corner. Uh, also on uh, Linden, near the corner. Uh, just trying to reinforce the plantings that happened on North Street in Great Park. Uh, that's it's a bunch of the trees. And then, uh, there are, are another six or eight trees up in uh, Florence, Chestnut, and, and uh, High Street. Again, it's, it's a kind of a corner where it's for whatever reason. <coughs> often in corners, the trees disappear all the way back from those, those in a big intersection. It's a fairly busy intersection. So that's sort of a traffic common intersection. There's about five or six trees going there. Um, you all know that spot. That's unusual in that that spot um, 
has fairly wide tree belts right there, and so we'll be able to plant uh, sweet gum trees, which aren't really that good for narrow, narrow, narrow tree belts. So that, that's like an opportunity, I think. Um, Good, good news, uh, next year there'll, there'll probably be sweet gum trees that don't have fruit balls uh, available. Um, that's, that's probably quite a few of the trees that are going. And then also, um, uh, some trees uh, along uh, Crescent Street also where we did plant some already this year. And so sort of finish some planting areas that yeah, we decide uh, for. In the, some of these areas, by going back and planting, mm -hmm. it will mean that we don't have to go back there again, at least not for a while. So we put, oh, we've been, we've been struggling with a little section of, of Crescent Street where there was a tree fell down and, and, a, and there's been a couple of tree failures. There's sort of a section that's opening up to not have trees. But we're kind of like stitching that back together. There's still a negotiation that Rich has started with uh, one of the homeowners who wants to contribute trees or a tree, oh, a winter king hawthorn or a hawthorn. Yeah, we're going to have to go there and meet with him. Yeah, so, so we have some more work. The old president's house at uh, Park School. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. wants to put, uh, because of the new construction across the street where they're going to be having the old development as a large parking lot, he wants to try to screen the on this property there, so we need to so, have a conversation with them. Yeah, so I want to say that when there are these wide tree belts, uh, it's an attractive area to plant trees, and so um, as much as I would pour more trees into North Street neighborhood, uh, it's, there's limited amount of tree belt, to, especially not under wire, which uh, a lot of neighborhoods, when you see that there are a lot of planting sites, it's under wire, which, or, or, and actually this pertains to the meeting we did, the discussion we just had, a lot of time you'll look on the map and it'll show lar even large trees, because uh, when they did the um, survey, they included places where there are no sidewalk, because they look at it, there's no sidewalk, there's plenty of space for a tree, and so they put large trees. But so far, uh, we haven't been planting any trees in those spots because of the goal, or at least as I understand, the goal to put sidewalks in all those places. So that you mean on on a street like Crescent Street? Is that what you mean? Do they no, only have sidewalks on one? No, they have on both sides of oh, Crescent okay. Street. But for just an example, and this is I'm not sure how it will turn out. Like, um, uh, well, Crescent Street. Yes, um, well, no, a, a better example, a, a really good example would be um, Massasoit. So Massasoit has a sidewalk on one side and none on the other. Yeah. And on the other side, that's a great place to plant trees, but, but, um, Massasoit, yeah, Massasoit, because it was just repaved, I can't imagine that it would see a new pavement project for decades and year. decades. Columbia Gas ripped it all up, but yes. my understanding is so these, you're, you're holding their feet to the fire to repave it, but yeah, there's no there's no addition of a sidewalk no. in that plan, is there? No, no, the layout of Massasoit Street's uh, 49 and a half feet wide, so it's pretty wide, so the, the property on the other side, where there is no sidewalk, there's... There's 10 feet, right? There's a good yeah. 8 to 10 feet in places so, that you can plant large and mature trees. Right. So, right. so, so the, that's a good example of a place where... It's safe to plant trees. It's safe trees. to plant trees, yeah. yeah. Okay, well that, that is something that, you know, would be very exciting because there's an opportunity to plant large trees without, without just very easily. So if that got clarified, that would be great. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Okay. And, and they, those are all over the city, streets like that. Yeah. They're all over the place. Yeah. Okay. And then the Forbes, the Forbes planting is this, oh. this weekend. Looks like the weather's going to be kind of gloomy and doomy, but I see it pushing off, the rain pushing yeah. off in the afternoon. So we might, we're going to go over and do a bunch of light work. We're going to drill all the holes because they're a really big ball and burlap trees. Yeah. So okay. we're going to re-drill everything and have everything ready so people can just show up 
take the trees apart, drop them in a hole, and fill them in and water them. And it looks like a lot of the people who want to volunteer are people who haven't been on, they weren't on the survey or any of our lists. Well, you know, you know the Forbes just put the word out. Yeah, so it's Forbes list. people, we don't really know. Yeah who they are, but we have some good people signed up, Paige and Jen Moore. Yeah. Right, so if, if Jen comes, and I plan on being there, just preparing the root balls would be something that the volunteers could do. They, I'm not sure they're gonna be dropping the trees into the hole. No, they're big. Yeah. I'm gonna probably have to put them in with a forklift. Yeah, yeah, so, but preparing the root balls takes a certain amount of energy. You know, um, removal of metal yeah. and, and, and also taking the baskets off and then backfilling the holes and then get building the donut and then moving to the next one. Yeah. And also getting down the root flare. flare. Carefully getting yeah. down the root flare. There's, there's plenty of yeah. Yeah. plenty of work. Well maybe that should be the main role of the volunteer. Maybe yeah. if, if 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 that's what you want volunteers to do, then that's really clear running orders. Yeah. Um, and we just need a few probably you know, I don't know how many volunteers do you know have a number? Well, uh, They're not all confirmed, but about 10, I have well, about 12 people signed up, but I suspect that some of them, you know, it's been a few days since I sent them in a question and they didn't answer back. So, you know, we don't know these people, we don't know if like, it was a whim. So I think we'll have six to eight. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Right? That's what, you what, you I'm aiming for six to eight. Sue, I think that's what I'll end up with. Do you have me on the list? No, I don't. Uh, I, I think I originally signed up and then you said I could use you on South Street and yeah. um, I am just saying so if it's morning rain or, or, or are you going to shift it what are we going to do I'm getting everybody's phone number but um, it wouldn't hurt to put out um, an email that says this is what the weather looks like we're planning to meet at 9, 9 a.m. an alternate plan may be to shift it to what time? Um, I'm looking at the weather. I mean, I'm looking at a weather report, and it's, it's almost too many a days ahead yet to really tell. But it actually looks from here like it's it's clear, and then heading into rain for the afternoon. You're you're Mr. Weather. And what are your constraints, Rich? I mean, do you you have bring people? Weather, bring all weather here. But for and you and your crew. This is, like, yeah. this is like sailing. You, know? you just don't get off the boat because it's raining. Yeah. yeah. It has to pour. Yeah, pour I mean, it's got to be like rain. mud when you're working yeah. in mud. Then then, it, then it'll be things. But Rich, you do have concerns fine. about the grass and, uh, and equipment on the grass, but you're going to somehow. Be like, you know, I think <laughs> it's a uh, foreground conclusion on the grass is terrible. So if you do damage to it, we'll fix it. I'm not really worried about it. Yeah. Um, Saturday, it's already 60% chance of showers, then. Yeah. Okay, all right. I think we're going to be so fine. Yeah. Yeah. So and I've told them there's parking meters at the library. Yep. It's fine. Yeah. It's cheap. But that's a quarter yeah. to give you an hour. It's fine. All right. That's what I'm telling them. Yeah, they also park in the parking garage. So they really worry about it. I can mention that garage. Yeah. And Details. Details. Yeah. Or down at Veterans Field. Then. Yeah. Well, people like details. Yeah. They, sh yeah. I think they show up better if you've given them a lot of details. Right. I think. think. The, the, the yeah, they know what's so going on. So free parking at Veterans Field. Yeah, it's just a little it's walk. It's a quarter mile. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn's got that dialed in over there. I live across the <laughs> Oh. All right, so we've got Forbes, we've got miscellaneous sites around. Um, are we considering the South Street project done, or are there still loose ends? Um, we have some setback. Yeah, uh, we, have, we have a couple of trees I just dig safe that yeah. uh, have to be planted. So we've yeah. probably got maybe, what, six more yeah. trees to yeah, do? Probably another six trees. So beautiful. And we're, we're waiting for some linden trees that um, are coming on Monday. Oh, good. Is one of them going to go in front of my neighbors on Monroe? Yeah, that's yes. right. Good, yes. great. Yep. There are actually probably four linden trees on on and about South Street, County Monroe, which I count as South oh, Street. Oh, good. Oh, good. And then is there, you know, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> The ones that we hope to swap out because they were poorly placed. What's our what's the status on that? I 
Can we at least prioritize a couple that are just truly columnar in the wrong spot? I'm I, thinking I have a suggestion about some of the columnars, which is that, um, especially if they're larger, and there's at least one that's quite huge out there, not that we just recently planted, but there's a big oak, um, yeah. at least one, I, mean, I can't remember, it might be a couple actually, is that it, it can often look good if you have like a, a row of columnars, so that instead <coughs> of taking one out, you add one or two. And so, Right now on King Street, there's a tr there's a one of these oaks that just fit it in because of a wire, so it looks kind of odd. There's one oak, cloner oak, and so one of the things we're doing this week or next, hopefully, uh, it's been staked and is putting another columnar next to it on the other side of the same wire. So there's not really like original, you know, thinking going backwards, we could have possibly put an elm tree and had it go over the wire. But now that that's not done, having actually two tr columnars creates a greater density uh, against the traffic. Closer, actually closer together. Right, right. And so there's an advantage of, of having like trees close to, close to each other mm -hmm. and, and having, uh, so the spacing of trees is really an issue. You can see this on Route 9 when you look at the, right around uh, Crescent Street, there's a row of um, hickory trees. Mm -hmm. And those are big trees. They're like, and they're like this. They're only about 15 feet apart. They're crammed right in together. And so, and on the corner of, uh, I think it's Maynard and, and Elm, there's a row of um, beach, I think, or are they Elm? They, yeah, yeah the row of beach, beach that are columnar and quite large. And they're, although they were just little spires, they're, they're getting so they're almost closing off, you know, making a, a wall. So I think that, that I think taking trees out isn't absolutely necessary, especially if they're larger, that, that reinforcing them with plantings that make sense with them. All right, well, I, I've heard you out, and, and I, I hear that perspective, and I, I want to I want, I want to reply in a couple of ways. One is that those columnar oaks that were put in maybe, I don't know, six, eight years ago now, at least. They're really problematic trees, and and I'm not suggesting that we take those out. They're there. We're stuck with them right. unless we're going to absolutely cut them down. But they are problematic trees. They are in, in starting to grow these these random branches that flop over. So they're as they get bigger, they're going to be more challenging. And it, and I hear the density, but you never <laughs> you're never going to get a canopy out of them. They're never going to provide. Um, shade up and over a sidewalk and over a street and that is something that we should always be striving for on our main arteries so I and and so I, I live with the mistakes that we've made in the past with them I strongly um, disagree with with planting any more on arteries where we could plant spreading trees and then with regard to the, the few that we planted just 18 months ago, they're still young trees. They can still be moved. There is a better spot for some of those trees that are on South Street. And I don't know why we would hesitate to move them because it's no harder to move them than it is to move a tree out of a nursery to this spot. What you're probably going to have to do is if, well, I'm worried about the trees comment on the trees that, are, that we planted. Those can be moved, the smaller ones. The only problem is, is that I'm concerned that the ground, because of the weather, I don't know if we're able to get them out of the ground. <coughs> you mean now? now? Yeah, so we may end up having to do this. We may have to actually do whatever we have to do, shake multiple shade tree earrings at one time just to take them out and move them, and then root prune them in the spring, and then take them out in the fall and move them to another location next fall. Because that's kind of what we did with that large tulip tree. Um, so that, because the problem is, is that we, we got to finish planting the trees we have and we got to go until the ground freezes. The other problem is, is that the tree crew have got a lot of work that has to be done that's not related to tree planting. There's still a whole bunch of stumps that have to be ground. There's loaming that has to be done. And so I need to try to balance all that. Plus we're trying to switch gears to get ready for winter. So, and I'm still got a, a, a pile of removals that have to be done. Yeah. So I don't think we'll be able to move those trees this winter. 
I think we need to just have, we need to probably go down South Street, walk around, identify the trees. I've already, I've them. already, you've got a list. Jay and I did that. Well, yeah, I can, I'm happy to, to re-forward it to you. Because so we, we meticulously went down how and many identified on the list? Maybe 10. And of those, I would say there are four that I'd really strongly love us to move. Because they're such beautiful spots. Do you remember what they are before? Well, um, kind of one of them was a kilometer sweet gum, I remember. Mm -hmm. um, and the others I can't remember. But I've got it written down. And I think I shared, I shared that with you. But I'm happy to forward it again. Well, I don't think I... I okay, I'm pretty sure I did, but it's okay. But... Um, but um, so, so yes, I hear that you've got other priorities, but I know that this has been deprioritized for a while, and, and my only hope is that we're not intentionally just indefinitely kicking this down the road. No, we're not kicking it down the road. It's just that you have, you know, any given day, just, there's all kinds of things that go on. So I, I don't want to commit to something until I'm going to do it, and then we can't do it. I'd right. rather just take the list. I, Double check it. Have the public shade tree hearing. You can yeah. do it any time in the winter, and then in the spring root prune them because you're going to have to because they've been in the ground for two years, mm -hmm. and then pluck them out and move them to other identified sites in the fall and make it part of the fall planting project. Yeah. Okay. So spring root prune, yeah, and then fall. Move. Yep. Okay. Yep. I will start by. How much um, is dig them pre leaf out and replant them? There you go. You're gonna burlap them. I suppose I, we could. You wouldn't have to burlap them, right? You could just Pro probably not. We'd probably be able to pluck them right out and then just drop them somewhere else, yeah. especially if we were nearby. So, so that's why it's a list of this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy to forward you that list. I'm pretty sure I don't have a dig of plant and pre leaf out if we don't. Right. Yeah. It's having those spots prepared ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Jig safe. Okay. Probably the birds. A long time ago, four six months ago. I'll, uh, I can find it. <coughs> I, I, I know I can find it. So don't, so I'll just send. I'll forward it again to. Does anybody else want to see it? Uh, I'll just find, send it to the whole commission. I don't care. Um, well, we, we do right. have a couple. We have one large columnar oak that I need to find a home for, and that's where Rob was kind of going with that other columnar plant. Yeah. On, yeah. On, uh, I, I, on, uh, well, I think you should do it because you, there's no other way of. In other words, you've already got a columnar next to it. If you plant a broad tree next to it, it's, it's going to be like a... Well, fly oaks are something. just problematic trees. You know, they you are, see what they hap what happens to them when they get older. Right. That columnar oak came out of Village Hill, so and it's huge. It's a very large tree. And it's and only line driveways to winders. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, that is the perfect application. Or or canals, you know, along the... Oh, the the Loire Valley. Mineral yeah. Springs. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm sure there is a perfect spot for a columnar tree. I just don't think it's along King Street. I mean. Well, we've got to get it in the ground because I can't, I can't, it's got to get in the ground because it's been on the ground for two years. Is it a tree yeah. worth planting? It's, I mean, yeah. one should always ask that. It's all kind of, I, I mean, I, I understand they don't create, they, they, they create a shade in a sense in the, by being very tall, it's like the Central Park needles. You know, people say, oh, they're just narrow, so they don't create shade. But they cast a shadow that's very, very distant because they they grow to 60 well, feet tall. Yeah, they're good against long, they're good, they're good against tall blank facades of, yeah. uh, of like a modern structure or whatever, and, and you know, for lining driveways. Right. Well, I don't know. There, there is no, I mean, there's no place like that to put this oak tree, I don't think, unless someone can find one. I mean, I don't, I, I, I think the, the other problem is if you don't put one next to the existing one, then you end up with just one column instead of two. It's hard to, you can go by and look, it's right by the Burger King. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I know every one of those goddamn columnar oaks, right. and but I hate every I, one I of them. But if you don't put one next <laughs> to it, what are you, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna I'm do? sorry. You're hurting, you're hurting the tree's feelings. I, I, love, I love trees in the right place, but well, they're you, just- You could put a spreading tree next to the existing one, sort of, except there's a power line between the two. Mm -hmm. So you can't go over into the- You know, I, I, you know, on King Street, I would be so much more in favor of cutting, if that columnar oak is in any way preventing another oak, I mean, another tree near it from spreading, 
Get rid of it. I'm not sure anyone would have, I don't know whether it, whether it's approved to put a spreading tree next to that power, power line or not. It's an, it's an issue. There's a power line right down, there's like an island, you know, of tree belt, and a power line that powers Burger King, which is a big one, yeah. going across. So these two things miss it. Any spreading tree could go up and over it, but that's a kind of a... All right, well, we don't, don't have to get caught. Uh, I, I don't know if we're gonna figure this out. Right yeah, now. I don't know. But, no, but, but the tree sits there and it's two years old. It's gonna die. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta let things die. We don't let things die. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta let things die. We don't let things die. We're being recorded, you know. It's alright, it's okay. I, I, you know, I, I'd rather, if there's any risk that, that a tree like that is, is, is taking up the wrong spot, then I say let the tree die. All right, um, moving along, Tree Northampton. All right, well, um, see, since our last meeting, we, of course, did South Street, and I thought everybody, thank you, um, commissioners who were there, and Rich, I think the volunteers had a really good experience, and I think it was a really great day for volunteering, whether cooperated, and getting ready for for the upcoming um, planting. We did have a photographer who'd approach you, Brittany, and she took some beautiful photos. Oh. She said she's a communications person at UMass, and um, so I know Alicia's Alicia been working with her, but that was really positive. She did come by and, and document that event. Oh wait, is that the one that approached us by email? Is that the one you're referring to? Yes. Oh, she we, was we talked about her at the last meeting. Oh great, yeah. yeah. So we did engage her and oh, nice. she did take some follow through photos. and take some really nice, very nice photos. And um, we're talking to someone about the tree nursery up at the community gardens, hoping to get um, a little more administrative volunteer support for that and planning support and expertise, but, um, and that's pretty much it. It's been covered in the other uh, reports. Well, thank you for organizing so adeptly the South Street Planting. I drove by that day on, a, on my way to that boulder growth oh, yeah. Yeah. and at Malton, and it was so delightful to see three crews at work. Yeah. It makes me so happy when I turn that curve on South Street now to see those so London Plains. I have been really wanting trees there for 15 years, so it's yeah. really wonderful. Getting a lot of people just excited having seeing that project progress all that way. Yeah. I think I we got can. emails from people I've never even talked to. Mm -hmm. Just thank you. Thank you for planting trees. Pretty impressive. I mean, after that one day, we you know we planted all South Street in the spring. We didn't get the same kind of reaction that I got this past time around, uh, personally, anyways, or directly towards me. What? It's just the people are really noticing, uh, you know, really noticing the changes. Yeah. And uh, they're very happy. Well, this time it was on the section of this of the of South Street that they actually walk into town. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, a much more heavily trafficked yeah. section. Yeah. People are going more slowly in that area, so they're looking more too. Is there a possibility to continue the planting? Yeah, you know the the current corner of South and Old South, where you put the sweet gums in. I think it that tapers off the private property. It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would have if, I, if yeah. when I was there. I was looking at a very rough map. It's possible that w with a better clearer line, you could add a tree. But yeah, I see. Okay. That know, just one of the things is that we, that in general, avoid requiring engineering to come out, just as a principle. In other words, if you try, try not to go so close to any lines that you require someone to come out and measure from engineering. Hmm. Well, that does remind me, because, you know, as, as our, our little subcommittee is looking more closely at promising streets that are heavily trafficked, I'm reminded of Con Street, where they just put in a new, brand new sidewalk. On, you know, as you're heading out of town on the on the left side of the street, that's right up against the street. And so I'm at. I was asking myself, is there any public right-of-way left on the other side of the sidewalk? 
where possible trees could go because that could really use trees. That's why it break before you enter the roundabout? Well before, along the entire length of Con Street. So, you know, my guesstimate is when I'm walking along is that they would have left a space and then, you know, that they would have, that they've used up as much space as they can. Yeah. It's just my guesstimate. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the assumption. And often in, it, it turns out that, it, that that's true, that the sidewalk marks the property line. Mm. But, I mean, checking is hard because the maps that you can, are available online, the ones that the city uses, don't tell you. Yeah. So that's why I say engineer, then you have to go to engineering, then it becomes a, you know, a project yeah. for, for someone from deep down. All right. Which, you know, I, maybe someday that will be something they'll go do is mark them all out, start marking out streets. It's not on people. Exactly. I mean, there aren't the people to do that. I'm just saying, say things change. Yeah. yeah. You know, someday it's, it would be of interest to see where the boundaries are. Okay, anything further from Tree Northampton? No. No, okay. Any other business? Right. I just have a question. So the chestnut trees were planted at Bridge Cemetery, Child's Park, um, Fitzgerald. Yeah. Eight at the Bridge Street Cemetery and on four at the two other sites. Mm -hmm. They're all planted? Yep, they're all on the ground. All right. Okay, great. All right then, to do? I don't know if we can't generate so much. Not too much, but I have a question. Um, because Sue is at these meetings, thankfully. Um, do we want to add? A, is this just for commissioners? Yeah. All right. Okay. So don't go left off. I I have plenty to do. You were to do. Right. 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 You're on to do list. Well, because I some of these are all you. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, Rich is going to be reappointed as tree commissioner or tree warden. Well, I'm, I'm assuming Hopefully. so. Hopefully. <laughs> and uh, Forbes planting this weekend. Uh, Lily include traffic calming manual finalization in next meeting's agenda. Subcommittee meeting at your house, I presume, on December 7th at 6 30 with me, Molly, and Sue. Uh, and you're going to email the three of us about that. Uh, Forbes planting this weekend, and then forward to the commissioners a list of trees on South Street, possibly <coughs> right. moved next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Todd, complete edits to the traffic calming manual, and send it to Jay, Jen, and Molly for review and feedback. So just send it to everybody. I'll send it to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then just as a point of um, note, uh, the next traffic calming committee meets uh, December 19th. Uh, that's something. Sometimes it's like December. Huh? Sometimes it's like December. Okay. Uh, let's see. Molly and I will be going to summer meeting. The meeting. whole summer, too. A right? couple months, yeah. Huh. And then Rob, uh, Forbes planting this weekend, and then you have uh, some additional trees to finish planting. Six or so. Okay. That's all. How many? Time for a quick question. Jesse. Uh, were, no, we, were we, were we, speaking of people skipping meetings on the December, were we possibly going to start going to one meeting a month for a while? We discussed that. Is, might, might not be the right time to bring up this one. Well, I, how about, how about we review it in January, January 1st? I mean, is there a particular meeting you want to meet, you want to miss? Uh, I will. Probably miss one in December, but that's okay. I come to a lot of meetings. Yeah, yeah. But just because be. December will be a time when I do some travel and stuff. Okay, all right. But just let me know. We should be an email. It just, yeah, it just made me think. Oh, it's it's, it's the it's the season to miss meetings. Yes, that's true. I I had thought about whether we want to. When is our second meeting in December? The twentieth. That's the one I can't meet. What day? Twentieth. Yeah, exactly. The twentieth of December. I'm really unlikely. I miss in both January. Ones. You're going far, far away again, aren't you? God. Where to now? South Africa. South Africa? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, so w you're missing both. So maybe we should have a discussion about uh, meetings in, in, because January is usually when we kind of zoom out, look at big picture, we elect officers, we uh, 
set priorities, although, although I think we decided we were going to start setting priorities more on the fiscal year because it coincides better with budgeting. Um, but if you're going to miss the two January meetings, maybe we should either bump that to February or do it in December. Bump it to February. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So we'll stick with our, our current routine until... Yeah, I would think being full strength in February looks hopeful. Okay. Whereas between now and February, I expect to see a lot of... Absences, Molly, you know, Molly will be done with her conflict. Well, not just Molly, but just... Alex, I'm going to do some travel. I'm going to do some travel, and yeah. I just suspect other people. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you could give me your travel schedule as early as possible so that if we're facing an, a, a, a lack of quorum, then we can give everybody advance notice. All righty. Motion to adjourn this meeting. Submit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.